Time to talk about the Baume Mercier Riviera, inspired of course by the name, the French Riviera, where I wish I was right now, rather than in f***ing freezing cold Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> the Baume Mercier Riviera, one of the early adopters of quartz and one of the early adopters of the whole steel integrated bracelet craze that we're so familiar with nowadays. Let's get into it. Founded in 1830, it took Baume Mercier a while really to come up with that headlining piece, which was the Riviera in 1973. There were some quirky designs in the mid 50s and dual register chronographs that fetch a pretty penny in the secondary market today. But it really was that 12 sided case integrated stainless steel bracelet inspired by, of course, the French Riviera that really put Baume Mercier on the map. So for a piece that started out as a quartz model in the midst of the quartz crisis, it's interesting that they chose to re-release it as a mechanical model, which releasing a quartz watch at the luxury price point that this watch is priced at, that would be frowned upon. So it totally makes sense that they made that decision. This Riviera, the reference 10660, was released at this year's Watches and Wonders, measures in at 42 millimeters with a 51.6 millimeter lug to lug and a 10.8 millimeter thickness. And it is a really, really lovely side profile. And not just because of the thickness, but because of the material they chose to use, which we'll get to in a second. Some of the other specs, you've got 100 meters of water resistance and a pretty basic undecorated Silita SW200. Does a great job, but is nothing remarkable. And of course, being a Riviera, we still have an integrated bracelet, although in this case, it's a actually really, really lovely, soft and pliable rubber strap, which integrates nicely with this rubber mid-link. And unlike some of the previous ones, which we've seen, you know, sapphire dials, skeletonized finishes, this one plays with different materials. We've got titanium, we've got PVD and stainless steel all in one. And it's the finishing in particular of those three different materials that are done really well in this particular Riviera. So to get into how this watch actually wears on the wrist, we mentioned already that it's fairly thin, but you do have those mid-links in rubber that protrude quite far, increasing the effective lug-to-lug -to, -lug to about 55 or so millimeters. So on my 611 inch wrist, it really doesn't work too well, although I really wish it did. And as far as the finishing that we've alluded to previously, looking at the side profile of this watch, We've got a lovely sandblasted titanium bezel with four functional screws, which then moves onto a PVD rose gold plate, which connects the titanium to a stainless steel mid case. And it's a really, really lovely, lovely horizontal brush on the case. And there's just a hint of polish on the screw down case back as well. So I was really, really impressed with the finishing of this watch because, you know, seeing the photos, especially a lot of press renders, you really can't get the full effect. And this titanium bezel actually on this press shot looks almost black. And I'm really glad they didn't choose that color. It would be way too big of a contrast. And that rose gold ring that we see connecting the two materials actually ties into the dial as well. We've got really, really lovely rose gold edged indices that are applied all around and they're matched really well by this brown, almost slate gray dial with a really interesting pattern on top. I'm not quite sure what those shapes are. They're not the Baume Mercier Phi logo as maybe something they could do in the future, but it just gives a really interesting texture to an otherwise quite empty, expansive dial. As someone who is not too fond of date wheels, as I'm sure I've alluded to a lot in my previous posts, this one is color matched. So well done Baume Mercier. Moving on to the rubber strap, I said before it's nice and pliable and it really is, although it does require to be cut in order to be sized, which uh, I would have preferred a pin buckle. I completely understand this decision though. It is sort of leading more into that luxury segment that Baume Mercier is trying to move into both with their pricing and materials they use in their watches. But like I said, for versatility, a pin buckle might have been a better choice. So with plentiful competition in that luxury integrated bracelet sports watch space, who is the Riviera really trying to appeal to? Well, it's able to undercut a lot of the higher end brands in price while still delivering plenty of heritage and an archival name with the Riviera. They're lovely and thin, and this one in particular, I was really, really impressed with the finishing. While this one might not appeal to smaller wristed folk like myself, mainly due to that end link integration, I can easily see it on larger wrists as well, the perfect watch for the French Riviera. What do you think about this one? What do you think about this continuing craze of new integrated bracelet watches? Let us know in the comments, and as always, like if you liked and subscribe.